Hey guys, welcome back to our Tim O'Brien author study. And uh, as always, we're going to review what our previous strategies are. Take a moment, write these down, remember them. Uh, the key thing I want to point out here is last week we learned repetition. Uh, repetition of, sta of sounds, words and phrases, syntax and story. What we're going to do is we're going to learn another variant of repetition, a very specific type of repetition. Uh, but before we get to that, I'd like to watch a little video clip. Uh, this is from a movie called Inherit the Wind. Uh, and this is a trial, like a, a Scopes Monkey trial sort of issue. And I want to jump ahead here and watch a little section oh, of it. The, the fires. Well, Drummond, can't you understand that if you take a law like evolution and you make it a crime to teach it in the public schools, tomorrow you can make it a crime to teach it in the private schools, and tomorrow you may make it a crime to read about it, and soon you may ban books and newspapers, and then you may turn Catholic against Protestant, and Protestant against Protestant, and try to foist your own religion upon the mind of man. If you can do one, you can do the other, because fanaticism and ignorance is forever busy. And needs feeding. And soon, Your Honor, with banners flying and with drums beating, we'll be marching backward, backward, through the glorious ages of that 16th century, when bigots burned the man who dared bring enlightenment and intelligence to the human mind. Well, that was nice. What is that guy doing? That's our question. Well, as with all rhetorical strategies, he is making an argument. And he's making it in a, specific, a very specific way. He's using a specific strategy. O'Brien uses it all the time. It's called polysadetan. Write that down. Know it. Cherish it. Love it. Now, what is polysadetan? Well, I will tell you. Uh, it comes from poly, which means many. It comes from sin, meaning together. And it comes from ditos, which means bound. So it's many things bound together. Well, what's the actual definition of it? Well, several coordinating conjunctions are used in succession. So we have for and nor, but, or yet. So those are our coordinating conjunctions. And and or are the two most commonly used ones, they're the most basic ones to be able to use for this. You could use other ones, other of those coordinating conjunctions, but and or nor tend to be the ones that are used most often. So let's look at some examples of what this is first. First two examples are from the things they carried. We remember this, talking about a Lieutenant Jimmy Cross, a dark theater he remembered, and the movie was Bonnie and Clyde, and Martha wore a tweed skirt, and during the final scene when he touched her knee, she turned and looked at him in a sad, sober way that made him pull his hand back, but he would always remember the feel of that tweed skirt and the knee beneath it and the sound of the gunfire that killed Bonnie and Clyde, how embarrassing it was, how slow and depressing. So there's one example. Another example. As a medic, Rat Kylan carried a canvas satchel filled with morphine and plasma and malaria tablets and surgical tape and comic books and all the things a medic must carry, including M&Ms for especially bad wounds, for a total weight of nearly 20 pounds. Those are both from the things they carried. Two other examples elsewhere. This is from a play by William Shakespeare. If there be cords or knives, poison or fire or suffocating streams, I'll not endure it. And then lastly, an example from Maya Angelou, she writes, Let the white folks have their money and power and segregation and sarcasm and big houses and schools and lawns like carpets and books. And mostly, mostly, let them have their whiteness. So these are examples that have been used. And what we want to know is why. Why would an author use this? Well, I've got three reasons for you. One is it can slow the reader down. So they can take in all that information. Uh, thinking about Rat, Kylie, and what he carries, or what any of the men carry in, the, in that first chapter especially, there's that list. And there's a lot of information in that list. And one of the other things do, that list does with O'Brien is a feeling of endless continuity or breathlessness. Because all these things are happening one right after the other. All of these items being carried. Um... They build on each other. 
and it, it, we can feel that weight that these men are carrying around, which is what O'Brien is trying to do, get us to feel what they felt. Um, one other thing it does, it often creates a feeling of overwhelming, as oftentimes these descriptions are mixed in with the plot. Uh, so as Maya Angelou is writing about all the things that the white people are going to have, she is saying, well, they can have all this stuff. I'm going to be me. That's what she's writing about. Um, so this overwhelming stuff is, is, is an aspect of it. So for practice, write two sample sentences about your summer plans. Summer's coming up just around the corner. Uh, one sentence should have multiple ands, and another sentence should have multiple s's. That is all I have for you today. Thanks for listening.